Hey everybody. Yes, welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast. My name is Jason Rothman. As always, I'm joined by the great Chris Schaefer. Chris, you look very put together today. You're wearing a button-up collared shirt. Yes, sir. How's it going? I am here dressed um, in my best for our funeral uh, for Lazy Man. I broke the news to everyone last week that... um, Lazy Man is no more, so I'm here for a funeral and then a wedding right after that. Funeral and a wedding where we're going to uh, reunite Skaggs with this podcast, basically. (laughs) Because we we had divorced Skaggs at one point, brought Lazy Man in, thought he was the one. He died. And now um, now we're in, in transition, Jason. How are you? Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I'm I'm doing doing good myself. We're uh, we're going to we're going to figure it out today. You you shocked me a couple weeks ago. You told me that lazy man builds were dead, and you had not told me that off the air. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I didn't know if you were serious or not, and you were. And I asked you what you're doing then for your builds, <laughs> and I didn't really have. I don't a think I got answer. <laughs> I don't don't think I got a clear answer, and then I had to look at myself in the mirror and ask myself, what am I doing with my builds? And I'm doing something I'm building, but um, I hadn't really redefined it or put some words to it lately. And I think today, I think we're both kind of circling what we're doing with our builds. We're kind of close in terms of what we do. It's, it's pretty much the same style or strategy on a lot of, a lot of accounts and I think we're doing a very similar thing, but I think today we're going to go through it, hear from uh, each other what, what we're doing, and then maybe put a name on it, and that name might be Skaggs. And I think we're going to use this opportunity to redefine Skaggs and take it over. So I think we'll talk about that uh, after the break and, and get into it and kind of redefine the best, most simple, but also most effective way to build out campaigns yeah you guys stick around because uh jason upcoming is going to break the news this is the search news of the week he's going to break the news of what skag stands for now there is a new acronym uh let all the paid ads universe know skags has been redefined before we do that i want to remind you guys about how this podcast is made possible and uh we're really thankful to be sponsored by such a great software that I say this a lot, but I'm always surprised. Uh, I hear people just casually mention Optio. Yeah, I use Optio for this or, you know, I have this, I have it for that. You know, it's part of their toolbox. It's, it's part of the tools that so many listeners utilize. They love the tool because it provides a sense of security, uh, to make sure they're not doing any massive mistakes. They help Uh, It helps optimize the campaign. And then also, it helps them to manage the campaign. It gives them a sense of structure, a sense of checking out, you know, what's happening, what's what's going on. And uh, it gives them a a beginning point for their day of management, for their week of management, you know, however they're managing things. So it works whether you're doing it on a small single account or lots of accounts. A great tool and really, really affordable it, to the point that you can you can use this tool with a you know some maybe some of your other tools and it still be a uh, a very affordable uh, solution for you. So try it out for free. That's the best price ever. Eight weeks for free. Uh, opteo dot com slash psp two to try the tool for eight weeks for free. That's opteo dot com slash psp two. Uh, use the chat box in the bottom right hand corner. Tell them you heard about. Optio right here on the Paid Search Podcast, and you can get eight weeks for free. Jason, what? I I don't I I can't stand the build up because you teased us last week. Share with these good ladies and gentlemen what Skags now stands for. I'm thinking we go with service to keyword ad groups, Chris. That's what I came up with live on the air last week and wouldn't share it on the air, but I shared it with you off the air. I came up with in two minutes or excuse me, in about a minute. Yeah. And say it, say it again. I feel, I, I feel like it, it wasn't weighted enough. 
Say that again. I think that's a, such a beautiful usage of that term. It doesn't make me feel nearly as creepy because let me say the old term was single keyword ad groups. Blech. Yuck. So maintenance heavy, so complicated, so ugly, and absolutely useless in today's Google Ads world. And if you disagree with that, I'll say it to your face. It's useless in today's Google Ads world. Uh, you get your own podcast and say different. Uh, Jason, say it again. What is this new Skags? Service to keyword ad groups. And uh, we were talking last week about, you know, uh, build structures and, and campaign structure and filling that campaign up with ad groups. And I used to be a, a skagger when it used to mean single keyword ad groups. And a long time ago, I got off of that and started creating themed ad groups. Mm -hmm. And that was the term I used for a long time. But uh, as we talked about last, or maybe it was a couple of weeks ago with the broad keyword updates and how they're looking at not only the keyword you choose, but the search users activity, other keywords in the ad group. This is for broad keywords. That really got me thinking like, yeah, I'm still going to build out campaigns the way I build them with so-called themed ad groups. But as we were joking around like, oh, we should give Skags a new name. Instantly, I thought of service to keyword ad groups. And I just think that that, at least for me, that describes how I build out campaigns. When I get a new advertiser, say like um, an orthodontist, the whole thing is like we want to get in front of people that are looking for what they offer. And so we can show the people searching this company offers what you're looking for. Go to their website and call them or fill out a form. That's lead generation. That's service campaigns, whether it's B2B or B2C, that's the lead generation service side of Google ads. I don't do any e-commerce. So this is what I focus on. And themes has always made sense. Like, okay, I'll have a theme of people looking for braces, a theme of people looking for orthodontist, a theme of people looking for orthodontist in Las Vegas, a theme of people looking for orthodontist in Henderson. That's a suburb of Las Vegas. But as all these updates have been happening to Google ads, the the theme just seems like a weird word that just confuses people. And then on top of that, I'm very much questioning if when I do a build, the pain of the build in terms of time and it's not, I don't want people to get the wrong impression. It's not like, it's not a time thing. It's a shooting yourself in the foot thing. My problem with the build process is I don't want to take out the time to an effort to do a ad group for orthodontist in Henderson keywords, and then an ad group for orthodontist near me, and then an ad group for orthodontist in Las Vegas. When I know over time, those ad groups might change and one ad group might get 90% of the volume. Another ad group might get like one click over three months. And so the unpredictability of what's actually going to happen and the variability of seeing what happens where like a bunch of different stuff can happen when a campaign starts playing out. That's really made me feel bad about being rigid with my builds. And that's why I wouldn't want to do currently like a Henderson theme, a Las Vegas theme. And so if it's not a theme, if it's not a, this kind of key, this group of keywords that talk about Henderson are in this ad group, then what is it? And to me, it's based on the services. Now I'm kind of thinking maybe we have an ad group for Invisalign, one of their services. Maybe we have an ad group for braces. Maybe we have an ad group for orthodontist. And if we throw in orthodontist near me, if we throw in orthodontist Las Vegas, if we throw in orthodontist Henderson, all in that one ad group with the word orthodontist as the service, I don't think that's a sin. I don't think that's wrong. So if someone does a search orthodontist in Henderson and the ad says local orthodontist serving Las Vegas, Henderson, the entire Las Vegas area. I don't think that's a sin based on how loose things are getting with the keywords and how much is going on. So I think we're at a changing point, Chris. I think what's made sense for me lately is just creating service based ad groups and then letting the campaign develop from there, which we'll talk about later in this episode, but I hadn't put a name to it. Now I am service to keyword ad groups. You go to a website, you look at the services, 
those services become ad groups, you stuff keywords, even if they have differences in them, like Henderson and Las Vegas, in those ad groups, and then you let the game start playing out and you play the game. That's where I'm at. You told me you killed Lazy Man, so give me, well, react to that. I want to know some other stuff, but you, but it seems like you have a strong reaction. Well, first of all, I, I, there's something I want to talk about, and I want to put this in our Patreon show. So let's make a note of talking about this. I want to talk about why uh, skags are dead, old skags, single keyword ad groups. I want to talk about why. I want to, I want to give a strong definition of that, and I don't want to spend the time during this show because many of our patrons uh, would be interested because. They're in the they're they like the theory and the idea of Google Ads, and this is more practical. So, so my second reaction is I really clicked whenever you said rigid. I think that is why I absolutely agree with your idea of it not being a sin to have some things that we would never do before. Rigid is exactly what SCAG, single keyword ad groups, used to be. It was the most rigid of rigid. You can't get more rigid than a single keyword ad group. The reason uh, those don't work is we can't control that like we used to. And we talked about this many times, and I say this all the time in my training and consulting that I do. We are now in a world, and you know, you know I love these big theoretical ideas in these in these slogans, right? Post close variant world used to be what I said. We are now past that. I'm going to declare us past a post close variant world. We are now in a post idea to idea, topic to topic, theme to theme world where keywords don't match to keywords, words don't match to words, keywords don't match to search terms. It's a smart algorithm idea to idea matching theme to theme idea matching so for that reason the rigid build doesn't work it it doesn't work so i i i think that this service to keyword ad group system is is the best way to go uh because rigid ri, ri, oh boy i really want to say it rigidity oh man rid ridiculous rigidness no. Rid, riduous? No. Righteous. That's it. Righteous. <laughs> no, that's not that. You're pulling me away from where I want to go instead of helping. Rigidity. Me. You, rigidity. Oh, that's it. Oh, that felt good. You know, like, you you know, you have like a zit, and you finally pop it. That's what that felt like. Like, oh, I got it. I couldn't get it. Do you get that in like some kind of personality training class? Like make references to stuff everyone else struggles with, so they'll like you, even though we all know the great Chris Schaefer has never had a zit in his life. <laughs> That's not true. There's a reason my video quality is so bad, Jason. I throttle it okay. down so that people can't see my horrendous. Uh, no, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Teach me. You think I took a class on likability? You jerk. I I'm a king of unlikability. I I don't know what you're talking about. I have no friends. I work alone in my house. <laughs> yeah, all right. Stop, stop. <laughs> You're bringing people down, Chris. <laughs> no, so, well, okay. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. R rigidness is out. It's been out for a long time, but now it's dead based on all these changes. I get your point that, okay, the last couple of years, some people could get away with trying to old school skag. They could get away with trying to build out a, it's just, I don't even like saying it because it's one of the stupidest things you can do in life. I'm, and I yeah. don't like stupidity. <laughs> Building out a campaign that you, like a detailed campaign before you even start running. Yeah. It's like one of the stupidest things ever. But you could get away with it because the the rules of the game were kind of laid out. The the You know, you could build up experience and know what you're getting into with Google Ads. But as we talked about in 2020, it the changes just kept coming, things evolved, and now what we saw with broad match keywords is just, uh, I like it because it's all new, it's all fresh, it's like the Wild West, and we're, we're seeing new things all the time, but it is a, just a crazy new time. And so the I get what you're saying, the rigidness is totally out now, but at the same time, because of some of these changes, like huge changes, broad match modified keywords just totally going away. 
phrase match keywords totally being a new thing, even though they look the same with the quotations. It's a new thing we have to figure out now. Uh, search terms being limited sometimes. All that's happened along with this final kicker, the, the broad keyword update. So when all that happened, you took out your build style, the lazy man that you taught us all. Now, so my question to you is how much you were you relying on lazy man? Like how much was that your style as themes were my style? And then are you not doing that at all anymore? Is that what you said? So then the question is like, what are you doing? So how much were you relying on that? And then how much have things changed for you with these final updates we've been through? So it was a hundred percent reliable, rely, man, shouldn't have a podcast if you can't say words, Jason. It's just a bad thing. It was a hundred percent reliance on lazy man build whenever I start a uh, a new client. So that was your style. Yeah, lazy man builds. Start a new client when when a client has zero history. And by, and by the way, for the for the dumb people out there, it's not lazy man management. It's lazy man builds. Right. Because that's what works. Quick, with, what quick, work easy, with fast, Ads. get results today. Flexible. Yeah. That's what it's about. It's not because and then manage from I there. don't want to work. It's because, you know, it seems lazy, but in reality, it's quick. It's it's agile. It works. So 100% on, on, on new campaign builds. But for campaigns that have history, I can actually make conclusions. Very small reliance on, 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 on campaigns with history and success you know, of any kind in of any significant amount. Um, okay. And, and I, I said something in our Patreon group on Facebook. I said, I don't talk often in there, but when I pop in, I pop in strong. I said something to the effect of, I don't know why this is working in Google ads, but I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to let it keep going and keep working. Yeah. And I said, said only great Google ads managers. And then that got huge reaction, huge and I think it uh, struck a nerve with people because they were like, yeah, that is sometimes I have my best success when I just go with what I'm seeing work and I don't question it. So when you're taking over a campaign, I hear I hear you. You're saying, let me ask you, are you saying if you're taking over an existing campaign that's working well, do you basically just do whatever the setup was as long as it's reasonable and kind of go from there? Absolutely. If there's a certain amount of success. Absolutely. Okay, so that that rules that takes care of that answers the question. Even in this new era, if you're taking over a campaign that's working, let it continue to work and go from there. Okay, done. But the question is, what about new campaigns? If you're not doing lazy man, well, you said. Let me. I want to know why you stopped that. If if you liked it so much, is it only because of the broad match modified just going away, and that kind of killed that whole strategy? Yep, that's it. That's it, because the lazy man build relied, I mean, basically entirely. I mean, we, I, I never touched broad, right? I, when I talked about the lazy man build, we never touched broad. I never put broad in it. You never, nobody did broad back in the, you to know, start a couple years ago. No, to start. I mean, that's a horrible idea. Noobs do broad, and then they realize, oh gosh, this is bad. Um, and then no. they call daddy yeah. over here. Yeah, so I do modify broad. And then broad. they say things like, hey, I think it's working. <laughs> but I don't think it's working. Right. It's working, but it could work better. And we're like, oh yeah, this is why. Yeah. And that and that's and, 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 and modified broad was it. Phrase was too restrictive. Exact was absolutely out of the question. Modified broad was great. And then we take steps from there to optimize once we have data. From okay, well that there's no more broad. modified broad. Right. There's so that's it's gone. So what are you so what are you doing now? So what I do now, um, typically is keywords that have volume. I use phrase. If I know that a keyword is going to have volume and I know that it has a certain amount of context and idea uh, to that keyword that's going to be on target, going to be qualified traffic, and there's volume, I keep saying that, I don't do this on stupid keywords. If it doesn't match these two categories, if both lights aren't green on context uh, and volume, if there isn't quality and search volume, then I don't move it into phrase. And there's usually only a limited number of those. So I might have that in a campaign. And then the other campaign I will use to do a broad match or, you know, call an audible for you know, maybe a different strategy or something like that. 
So fra- okay, so that's so that's phrase. But what about the ad group strategy? How are you creating your ad groups? How do you know what ad groups to make? And that's why I I don't think anyone can uh, have beef with um, the service to keywords. I think that strips out what it is. And and so have you basically been doing that without a name to it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So to answer your question, I do service to or you know, to, I mean to use a synonym I use service to keyword ad group I use topic to the keyword ad group I use theme you know but I mean it's all the same it just means the same thing it means when a person has a certain intent I match intent to ad group so that might mean that just like you said there might be orthodontist near me orthodontist Henderson orthodontist Las Vegas and for now, I just put those in the same ad group uh, because you know as well as I do, the reason I don't separate those anymore is because you can just as easily get Las Vegas orthodontist for a keyword that says uh, Henderson or vice versa. Yeah. And so the nerds out there would say, well, yeah, of course you can. So put in some ad group negatives. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so smart. A little bit. But then, as we've seen, you get into situations where someone's sitting in Henderson at, at night doing a search for Las Vegas because that's where they work and that's where they want to knock out their dental thing or whatever. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's why I like this name, Chris. And that's how I want to define Skags now and how we define it as a podcast. Service to keyword ad groups. It takes care of all questions. If you don't like that style, if you want to build out an ad group for Henderson, an ad group for Las Vegas, an ad group for near me, which I might do as well, but later on once I get some volume. Yeah. And once I get some proof that those keywords are going to work, what kind of volume they're going to get, all that kind of stuff. It's so important to emphasize this is the launch of a campaign. And we have a conversation about optimization. We're not talking about optimization. The whole topic here is about launching a campaign. You know, perhaps we should have a different name for mid-optimization or high-optimization type of campaign builds, but that's not what this is. We spend 90% of the time talking about ways to achieve that, but this is a conversation about new builds and how to be efficient in what you do. No, see, there's no... That, that that's called management that's called experience yeah, that's called good every point. single situation is different and unique for the client the market you everything's different so that's just management but i think it does serve well to have a, a structure for for builds a way to think about google ads and some examples here chris why i love this name service to keyword i go to an orthodontist website i need to come up with a list of ad groups that i'm going to stuff with keywords for my for my build. Well, I'm looking at a service list here. I see a Invis- Invisalign. I see they're just a general orthodontist, so they do so those kind of searches. I see braces. I see adult braces. I see adolescent braces. You know what I don't see? I don't see Henderson. I don't see the word near me. I don't see the word Las Vegas. So what I like about this system is that it forces you to go as simple as possible because I'm just, I'm looking at their services and okay, I see Invisalign and I go, okay, well, we're going to make keyword, every keyword, every keyword that I want to target for Invisalign, it has to go into the service to keyword ad group, the services ad group. That keyword goes into that services ad group. The words braces, they go in the braces ad groups, but you know what I see? I see that for this client, Braces for children, they look at that different than braces for adults. And I go, okay, I get it. So that's going to have different ad copy. That's going to have a different search intent. Different intent. Those are different, those are different services. They're looking for something different. So then for me, starting out, it makes a whole lot more sense to go, okay, adult braces and then maybe braces, because most braces are for children, a braces ad group, and start separating things that way then Henderson near me, Las Vegas. And then, so I just love you just like, what ser- what ad groups do we need? You look at the website and you look at the services and you, you start there. And what I love about this, Chris, is that it's resurrecting your lazy man style. It's saving it. It's giving it a new platform for the new era. 
and it's combining it with the themed kind of ad group that you and I have been doing for years. So I think the new SCAG is taking the 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 service to keyword ad group. It's saving Lazy Man the inspiration from Lazy Man. Keep things simple, manage from there, just get up and running. And it's combining it with what we know works with Google Ads, themed ad groups. And so I am a skagger again. I do service to keyword ad groups. Oh, I think we stumbled on upon it. <laughs> stumbled into something here, Chris. I'm not used to that yet. I don't think I'm gonna. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna say it yet. Um, just own it. Own it. Take it. Steal it. Don't. Don't let them. Gonna, it's gonna have to be later in the episode what it, for what it used to be. I'm, not, I'm. I don't feel like I'm there yet. I, I'm a little more comfortable, I guess. But uh, okay. But you know it works. You know. Yeah. Telling a new client, hey, uh, I have a system. It's called SCAG. That acronym, it stands for this. You know that works. People are like, oh, you have a system? Oh, yeah. It has its own acronym. You have a structure. This isn't your, we're in control. Now we can say, when we're talking to a client, we can say, I have a system I invented. You may have heard of it. It's called SCAGS. Uh, I'm the creator of SCAGS. <laughs> they won't know that I just changed the name. It's now single keyword ad group, uh, or what it was a single keyword ad group. But uh, yeah, I like that pitch. So Chris, the the benefit here with ad copy, I I think one huge benefit is that even though you're starting as simple as possible, you're starting with as few ad groups as possible. Th- those ads are still going to match the search intent like really strong, uh, and not just the ads, but the ad headlines. Those are going to be like spot on an Invisalign search. I don't care what they put after that. The ad headline is going to say Invisalign and that's really going to connect with people. If they have an adult braces ad group and the ad headline talks about adult braces and you can confidently put that in the ad headline because you know, every keyword you stuffed in there is going to relate to adult braces. I think it's going to lead to strong click through rates right off the bat as well. So I think it, it solves your ad cop. Oh man, it's the best system, Chris. What what landing page should I use for my ad? What page do I use? Well, Henderson, Nevada, near me, what do I do? The Henderson, whatever. No, you just service to keyword ad groups. Skag. The landing page solves itself. You just take the service page from the website and you throw it there. On the on the final URL and it it solves itself. So I think that's a strong yeah. benefit and, to the service to keyword ad group as well. And what we're going to talk about later in the show is you know step two, step three. You know, kind of how do you, how do you grow? How do you change this? How do you react to the data once it starts coming in? But this is this is the starting point. This is the point when you can start and get data. You know, I say it all the time, but you only get one thing out of Google Ads, guaranteed not clicks or anything like that, because that's not really worth anything. Traffic's not even really a guarantee. You can get data. You get data from a Google Ads campaign, and that's what this new Skag system is designed to do. Get you data and move you into step two. It's a, it's the grease to get you from nothing to go. That's that's what I like about it. So, Oh, one, one thing real quick, Chris, what, what, another thing I love about having the structure again of Skaggs, the, the, just the control that Skaggs puts over a manager. If we just left this open to say creating themed ad groups as our build structure, do you know how open that could is? Do you know how misinterpreted that could be? And then even worse, do you know how abused that could be? How managers or clients with maybe good intentions, but they don't know what they're doing. Do you know how far off base people could get by just saying, yeah, we're building themed ad groups. I mean, that could almost become like the old skag. Like you just think of every single search that you could get. Specific themes where you have every every city is a different theme. Every subcategory. Not only that, but imagine the word the way the word theme is taken for some people with a certain maybe kind of like creative brain or something. They're like, okay. And and the old, like the old school marketing agency brain, like, okay, we're going to have theme of people searching for office movers who 
have big offices. We're going to have a theme of people who are searching for office movers who are downsizing their office. We're going to have a theme of office mover searches for people that are also going bankrupt mm, and their business yeah. is shutting down. So it's a shutdown office move. It's like <laughs> it, you can just go on and on and yeah, on. That's true. And then that's yeah. how you have hundreds of ad groups and just craziness. So what I like is, no, it's the service, service. to keyword. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have a service on your website, a service page for office moving, guess what? That's I'm going to put every single office moving keyword in there and it has to go in there. We're locked down because this provides structure. Yeah. But then what do you do with the management? We'll talk about that after the break. What kind of match types do you use? We'll talk about that after the break. Quick reminder about Optio. They've been our uh, longtime sponsor and we really do appreciate uh all, all that they've done for our own clients, right? Jason and I are separate independent managers and we have our own clients and we use Optio ourselves for Google Ads management. So not only do they help the listeners of this show, uh, they also help Jason and I uh, with our own clients. We we like the tool, we use the tool. It's, it's, a, it's a very unique um, kind of relationship where, you know, we... We're introduced to Optio because of the show. Now we like Optio, and now we're spreading the news about Optio. So, hey, you got you to gotta at least try it. It's eight weeks for free. I'll tell you the website. It's optio.com slash PSP2. That's the number two. Fill out the little chat form. Talk to the friendly people on the website and let them know that you want eight weeks for free because you heard about it on the Paid Search Podcast. Okay, Chris. We need to talk match types. So... If you're doing, and, and here's where I'll, I'm looser. I'm, I'm not as strict with this structure that we're creating with SCAG, service to keyword ad groups. I think match types can kind of be, you know, what people want. For me, I'm throwing in phrase. Okay, yeah. I'm throwing in exact. Uh, exact is exact. It's as exact as you can get. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, even exact if it's not exactly exact it should, it should these days. Exact-ish. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I get what you're saying, Chris. Exactly. I think phrase, you really need to be careful with what keywords you throw that on. And I'm not saying don't use phrase. I use phrase all the time. All the time. And I use a ton of phrase. But given the new update, I just like to do a little double check and be like, okay, is this a one word keyword? Should I really be doing phrase here? What are the consequences of that so you i'm i'm exact i'm phrase but i'm also when i do my phrase i just think it through a little bit to make sure it makes sense i would not and there's no more broad match modified as as cool of a thing it was it's gone so that's it for me phrase and exact broad i put off into their own campaigns now mm -hmm. what are you doing with your match types so in the idea of the Pay Search Podcast always talks about simplicity. We always talk about simplicity, making things simple, getting to the idea without um, making it too complicated. I'm gonna I'm gonna establish a rule of thumb that I think could be pretty good for this. Um, this absolutely can be wrong for some situations. This is interpretable based on many different things. But here's the rule of thumb. Rule of thumb is this. If the keyword has one word in it, let's say it's exact. If the keyword has two words in it, let's say it can be possibly exact or phrase, right? It's a, a, a toss up. Then we move into three words. And now I feel like it's a toss up between doing phrase and broad. And then four words or more. Let's go with broad. I feel like there's a type of sl sliding scale there based on the number of words. So am I hearing from you that you prefer to use exact on short phrases? Mm -hmm. One or two keyword, one or two words in the keyword? Yeah. Like, um, you know, if, 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 what was our example? We're doing... Um, orthodontist, just orthodontist. that word. Just that one word I would put as exact match, right? Because there's no context. It's not referencing if it's in Las Vegas, are they are they wanting to get a picture? Are they wanting to so watch a video? So with orthodontist phrase, you're worried about people searching for like orthodontist 
school, how much money do orthodontists make, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, if it, if it was phrase match, you and I read those rules, and we know that yeah. it's the interpretation is a little looser uh, with the phrase match. Right, you know, they 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 treat it a little differently. So that's that's kind of the idea. That's why I like exact match because at least it limits the risk. The list. The so if you're like, if you're like, okay, orthodontist, I want ex- if someone does a search for that exactly, probably they're looking for an orthodontist to hire, and then you're like, okay, I'm not going to do phrase match orthodontist because I know what words I want after it, and I'm going to have those as keywords anyway. Las Vegas, Henderson, near me. Mm-hmm. in my area. So you're confident that you can come up with those basically just knowing what you know about service keywords. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, I get that line of thinking. And I mean, there's a whole nother conversation we could have about, you know, we really prefer um, to use manual bidding because then we can adjust the keywords that have more risk, you know, orthodontist. Oh, I, may, sure, I yeah. may not, you know, and if there's some broad there with four or five, uh, you know, words in them and they're getting a ton of traffic, I want to be able to slow those down. So that's a whole nother conversation of complexity, but in reality, that's a good rule of thumb to at least start off with. If you're going to use automated bidding, you know, kind of understand the risk that you put yourself at by putting everything into phrase because one word phrase has no context it has no intent there's no intent to that word one or one or two words as exact and then as you get longer freight longer terms and you can kind of control what you show up on a little more you're open to phrase and then as you go longer with like four or five words in the search it's kind of like, why would I do those as exact off the bat? Because there's so many of them and they're going to be low. The more words there are, the lower volume it'll be. So it's getting to broad match because you can feed the system information right. and kind of help help it. So, but, but given what we learned about broad match last week and given the performance we see with it and how you have, how it's so different than exact and phrase, are you creating um, a second campaign for broad if you want to start with broad? I yeah, but like I, I think said, you have to Chris, the simplicity. At this point. I mean, it's it, I it's just, not what we used to do. Yeah, but I think you have to. I the simplicity points me towards just recommending. If we're going to define a process, I like processes to be simple, you know. And I rarely build two campaigns from the start, you know. So. I like simplicity. I like to keep things easy for my management purpose, and I don't necessarily put things into uh, two campaigns. Okay, I'm, I'm talking with a new client right now, and they're a very specific um, advertise. Like they're looking for a very specific person that's like looking for a very specific kind of loan. Okay, and so for me, service to keyword ad groups, great. I'm going to have my different loans that are trying to get in front of people looking for as those. That's what they offer. They offer that service, that Mm -hmm. loan. Mm -hmm. So we have that as an ad group, phrase exact. For them, they have a small budget. They're trying to prove the concept of Google Ads for their business, make sure it works. We know exactly what we want to show up on. There's not that many ways to search for it. Why would I put in a broad match keyword, a broad match campaign for keywords that have to do with loans when yeah. that's going to bring in so much stuff and we yeah. don't have so much budget. Right. That's a good point. So I think, yeah. so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, I don't think it, there need, there does not need to be a rule that you have to have your broad match campaign that's, to go along with I this. I feel like that towards that, that leads us towards being more rigid and that's what we're pushing against, right? That's what we yeah. don't like. So I, I would say you don't have to have, there's no rule that you have to have it. Don't have it if it's not a good fit for that advertiser. But I would say in the past, we're very much like, okay, if we can put everything in one campaign on a build, it should be in one campaign. Yeah. But I think now with this SCAG style, service to keyword ad groups, my outlook on number of campaigns when it comes to the having one for broad match keywords, I'm open to it if it would make sense. So I very much could see that sometimes I will have a second campaign. Now, I think that campaign probably won't be as detailed. Um, I'm not going to just copy and paste my phrase and exact match campaign and then change the pasted campaign to all oh, broad. Gosh, yeah. That's not how I no. do broad. No. I, usually my broad campaigns are like one ad group at the most two ad groups. And it's just kind of on the higher volume stuff 
trying to find some new search terms that come in, um, trying to see if we can get more volume and just control the bid and, and get a good cost per conversion. So it's almost like a if I do end up doing a second campaign for broad, it might just have one ad group mm. or maybe two mm-hmm. focus on the higher volume stuff, at least to start. Yeah. And, and as far as growing goes, to talk about growing, this really depends. Uh, growing would be a, you know, another word would, would be optimization, management, management right? The management yeah. of the campaign from there essentially means you react to how, where the data points you. So gold standard would be conversions. Uh, second standard would be quality of traffic. So if you're getting conversions, use the system in a altered way so that you can control and react and maximize those conversions. So if it turns out that a certain service subset is more successful and providing a whole lot more lift, then you take that subset and create a tighter themed ad group around that and you have some specific keywords around that you push on those and you pull back on the others that's that's how you grow i don't ever want to see someone who's three years in that's still sticking to the skag system you know the the skags eventually goes away and you have to reframe things based on the results you're getting it's it's very easy way to think about it chris service again the name I came up with, and I'm going to give you credit if you want it. I will for no, if you want it. No, no, it was your no, baby. No, 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 no. This is our baby, Chris. We're Aww. parents of this baby. Yes, we. I cannot do this alone. Thank you. This is together. So this is what we came up with: service to keyword ad groups. This is why it's perfect. Think about this over time, Chris. You start with your services, and then to create your ad groups, you come up with keywords right there in there: service to keyword ad groups. That's The phrase serves to keyword ad groups. That's what happens. You take your services, you turn those into keywords that go into ad groups based on your services. It's a circle. But when it comes to management, just focus on the first two words of the phrase. First three words. Service to keywords. Mm. Because what you do, Mm. you start with your services. That's where you start. Wide open, not wide open, but open, flexible, see what happens. And then where does it end, Chris, with management? It ends at keywords. And then you let your keywords guide you. So that means look at your cost per conversion on your keywords. Look at your impression share on your keywords. And if there's no standouts, if it's all kind of getting some volume and it's all getting about the same cost per conversion, guess what? Then your life's easy. You can manage at the ad group level. Mm -hmm. And you can change your bids at the ad group level. And Mm -hmm. that's fine. And ads can apply to the whole ad group and Life is easy, but most likely you will have standout keywords. You will have standout kinds of keywords that because you put Henderson and Las Vegas and near me and all that in one ad group, maybe near me is the moneymaker. Maybe that's the one with the 23% conversion rate, but because it only, because it's in an ad group with a bunch of other stuff, you're limiting your impression share. So then what do you do? What I do, I copy and paste that ad group. The one that's been running, I rename that to orthodontist near me or near me. I pause everything else except the winning near me keywords. And that becomes the keyword ad group, service to keywords. That's important. You're keeping the winners untouched and removing everything else, not the opposite way. That's important. Yeah. And then in the newly pasted one, I pause the near me ones that are left over in the old one. And then with that new new ad group, that is still the service ad group and it's Las Vegas, it's Henderson and you gather your data, but now I'm able to maximize and get more and focus on uh, the near me keywords and and manage those in their own ad group. But like you're saying, Chris, I don't want to mess with those. So I copy and paste the ad group. And in the one that's the original, I keep the winners. And so that's where you go with your management over time. And then guess what? If near me is just such a strong performer, but I still am limited on impression share because of the overall campaign, all the other ad groups taking up budget. I'll do something like copy the campaign, leave that one named as near me and maximize the budget on that one and keep it in its own campaign. And then have another campaign for similar kinds of keywords, but uh, all the stuff that got pasted in. But I'm not going to do that on day one, month one, until something's proved out. And also, by the way, near me not getting the impression share you want because other stuff is going on in your 
campaign when you bid down other stuff and bid up near me because it works great that's going to be rare but those are that's how flexible it can be if you want to do stuff like that you yeah. you can but you don't do it until it's, it's proved out so i think service to keyword ad groups you start there but then your management service to keywords and you let your keywords kind of guide you and that's how i'll be growing yep. these campaigns over time that's yeah man i was a little worried we jumped into the to the call today. I saw a blank slate in front of me. I was worried that we were going to not be able to come up with a solid rule system for such a critical redefining of of, of such an iconic name. But I'm really happy. And with I told it. you not to worry. You did, but that's you know, I doubted. I doubted, and uh, please forgive me for my doubt. I I like it. I think we have successfully redefined skags and um I, I expect everyone whenever i see skags on twitter or skags being mentioned uh in any article i assume this is now service to keyword ad groups wow that's uh, so, so well said chris now uh we're gonna get into patreon we have a few different topics in there you know, don't read anything out loud. Don't give anything away. But I just I want you to read over. I haven't even scrolled my yet. Bullet points there. I won't even yeah, scroll. Check those okay. out and see see if it looks like okay, it'll be a good see. one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you in Patreon. <laughs>